Hello and welcome to my channel. This weekend was full of ham radio and a car show. I'll tell you all about it. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and this past weekend I made a trip up to Pennsylvania for a car show and some ham radio activity. I wanted to attend the Bag Fair car show in York, Pennsylvania. I've never attended that show before, but it was uh, relatively close. I want to say about 250 miles. I had been in contact with Lucas Juan, and he has a, a YouTube channel as well. And I, I don't remember if I asked him. I think he asked me if I was going. I don't remember who asked first. And that got me to thinking about going and seeing if it was within the cards for me to drive up there. And uh, sure enough, it was. I decided to make a weekend of ham radio out of it as well. I have recently started doing what's known as Parks on the Air. I have a video, I'll, I'll link it up here. It's kind of lengthy and, and not really for everyone. I think hams might like it. And I decided that I would visit Kodoris State Park and activate that park as part of Parks on the Air. I was successful there. The video that I shot, I don't know if I'm gonna share it because it's, I don't know, it's a little scattered, maybe a little boring as well, but I'll, I'll piece something together and see what I come up with. That evening after working from the state park, I then went to the Pennsylvania-Maryland state line and joined the 3905 Century Club net and basically spoke to people from that state line. When I check into a net from a state line, it counts each QSO or conversation counts as two because they're contacting both a Pennsylvania station and a Maryland station. So I talked to a lot of people that evening. My drive up to Pennsylvania was rainy. And if you've ever shown your car, and by the way, I do show my car when I go to these car shows. I show for two reasons. One is to support the venue and the club that is hosting the event. I don't remember what I paid for it, but you know, the car show fee is just to cover, I suppose, trophies, awards, and, and other costs. And so showing the car supports the club. And it gives me a fantastic parking spot. What's not to like about that? I know other people who do it for maybe similar reasons, but they'll just show up with their dirty car and take a good parking spot. And I don't know, it's kind of a waste of time if you're gonna show a car and not even put the effort into making it look good. So when I show my car, my thought is show hard or go home. So I really take the cleanup seriously. And I guess that's a third benefit of showing the car is I get to clean it to levels that it's almost never cleaned. So I spent some time the week before the show cleaning the car up, cleaning every nook and cranny, every crevice that you would never think to run a towel through. And then it rained <laughs> and I drove, drove up in the rain and got all of this uh, dirt and rain up and all these crevices all over again. So the Friday that I drove up, Saturday? Saturday I drove up, it was rainy. And then Sunday morning, the morning of the show, I got up and I washed the car again. So with the car perfect, perfect, uh, I'm ready to show, but I have a problem. Well, I had mentioned that I came up and did all this ham radio stuff and I was checked out of my hotel. So it's not like I can just leave all the ham radio stuff at the hotel. I had to bring it with me. So I decided to make the ham radio a part of my exhibit. And that went off a lot better than I thought it would. It was, you can call it a, a, a collision of a car show and ham radio. Could almost call it a special event station, but I didn't do any transmitting because the car was there all day. I didn't want to kill the battery, but I did have my equipment on. I did have the refrigerator going and I needed it for the extra water and some of my food. And yeah, lots of really cool conversations. I had people come up to me that recognized me from either my YouTube channel or maybe they had spotted me, recognized a car from say uh, golfmark7.com. And it's always nice to meet new people. And um, yeah, it was fun to, to meet some people who recognized me from, uh, from YouTube as well. The weather was perfect for a car show. It was uh, 79, I guess the perfect would have been 72, but it was 79, humidity was low. And, you know, the sun was out, so that, that meant uh, sunburns were a possibility. 
there was something up there in the air that I was allergic to. The allergies were hitting me pretty good, which is kind of funny. Uh, Lucas had come to, I don't want to say interviewed me. He did a, um, he, he did a vehicle walk around and of course had me talking about the car. And I remember this was one point I just felt like I was going to get a big nose run. I was just like, excuse me. And I just left. <laughs> it was so abrupt, but I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to dribble on his video. So, uh, yeah, you know, that was a little tough to get under control. And, and now here I am back in Southeast Virginia. It's been raining. So I basically I cleaned the car, drove 250 miles in rain, cleaned the car again, showed the car, then drove 250 miles back in the rain. And now the car is trashed and I'm here in I think it's about 82 degrees right now, but it is really humid. I'm just sweating and it's not really even that hot. It's just the humidity. So uh, that's, that's life in Southeast Virginia, I guess. The, the show, uh, this ham radio exhibition, you, you'll, you're seeing some things that, that I've never shared before. The most recent is a, um, a car desk, which goes in the passenger seat. I think I had shown somebody at some point that I got one of those desks that will clip onto the steering wheel. And my thought was that I would stick a laptop on there and do logging whenever I'm working on nets or working at state parks, national forests and things like that. But sometimes these calls just come in so quickly that, that typing it all out while operating the radio is just not practical for me. And with pen and paper, if I hear two or three calls at the same time, I can write down bits and pieces of them so that I can call them back. And on a computer, I can't do that. And so once I decided that I did not want the computer on the steering wheel and that I would do pen and paper on the steering wheel, then I wanted, I still wanted the computer for other reasons. So then I got the computer desk. The computer desk sits in the passenger seat and then I can slide the computer over to where I can use it. Obviously I don't use it when I'm driving. It's only when the car is parked, but, uh, it's been proving very useful. It's got some storage area where I can put some files and pens and paper and my glasses. I have reading glasses that I use when I'm working tight in the car. And I got to measure that big cubby underneath, but I could maybe fit more equipment in there. Maybe I'm not done stuffing this car full of equipment. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Lucas's video. Um, I release on Thursdays. I think I'm going to release this on a Thursday and his, I think he said he's going to publish on Sunday. I did not get a lot of good walk around video of my car at the show. I've been sharing some still photos with you. Check out his video. I'll, I'll link it up here when he publishes it and then he'll, he'll give you the walk around view of the car at the show. So how did things go at the show? Uh, they went very well. I was, I was pleased to have such a good showing. The car looked good. The, ham radio set up in communications. It was kind of a communications exhibit and perhaps the first of its kind at a Volkswagen centric show. So I was pleased to get as much uh, interaction with people visiting the car and checking it out, talking to me and asking questions. A lot of people were curious about it and that was fun for me. But then when I found out that I won my class, I entered in uh, mild, Mark 7 mild, not, not Mark 7 wild, and certainly not the, uh, what are they called, the Midway Madness. Those are the guys, the top dogs with super mods, beautiful, beautiful cars. My car on the outside looks fairly ordinary, and it's only if you read the specs that I listed up under the hood that you can know that there's more done to the car than, than meets the eye beyond the communications. And then people would uh, look at the car and kind of marvel at it, and then they hadn't even made the way to the back. So I said, well, go, go look in the hatch and try not to pass out. And then they go take a look in the back. And yeah, they were pretty stunned by it all. And so that was fun for me. But when I found out that I won my class first place, that was, uh, that was unexpected and, and, and a pleasure. It's, it's nice to be recognized. So how do I do it? What are my recommendations for, for showing the car? Well, as I said before, show hard or go home. It's, you're not giving the car a good show unless you clean, 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 clean. It's, there were a lot of really nice cars there with good tasteful mods. And it doesn't matter how cool your car is at a show. People's choice is a different standard. People are not looking at the same things. And so it's all a matter of what the viewer thinks. But when your car is being judged, cleanliness is everything. It doesn't matter how cool 
the moths are on your car if the car is not clean. Somebody told me, one of the judges, he looked up my score sheet and he told me that I got 38 out of 40 possible points. Now I didn't see my scoring sheet, so I don't know which sheet they were using. But looking at this sheet here, from when I showed the car at bug out 80, I think, they actually shared the score sheet with me on that one. And uh, that one also totals up to 40 points. So if they were using this criteria, I can imagine where I lost my two points. My paint is not perfect. It's really good, but it's not perfect. I've got some chips and, and uh, pitting in my windshield that would possibly take off a point. And believe it or not, all the stuff that I had in my car, because I had the, the auto desk, the refrigerator, and then some luggage in the car. And so that covers things up. And so basically, if they cannot see that it's clean, the fabric and the floor mats and things, then they can't give maximum points. So they could have taken off a point for any of that. I remember at the bug out show, I got points deducted for not having shiny stuff on my tires and my engine bay. I don't think I use a, a shiny finish on any of that. I don't like it, but judges do. So I shined my tires and I shined my engine bay. So when I compare that judging sheet from bug out to what I think I got on this show, I can see that I earned points back. And I think at bug out, I didn't really have a theme. Well, the theme can give you one, two or three points or zero if you have no theme. And I don't think I had a theme at bug out. And so this thing with my ham radio setup, that's three more points that I could get. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how you do it. But clean, 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 and more clean. Everything, places that you wouldn't imagine. I'm showing you uh, some B-roll of my engine bay. These are places that nobody cleans. People overlook all the time. Look in your own car and you'll see that dirt just accumulates in places that you wouldn't even think about. And after a while, the dirt is so permanent looking that you don't even think it's, you, you think that that area is supposed to be black, but it's not. You wipe it away and there's, there's clean paint under it. You just have to put in the effort to, uh, uh, to run rags or towels or pipe cleaners or whatever under there. Even pressure washing doesn't really get in there very well. You just got to get in there and clean. I even got up under the car and cleaned my, uh, my exhaust pipes. Uh, the reflector up underneath the car, the heat shield is what it really is. I, I shine that up a little bit. I mean, today it probably looks terrible, but uh, if I really wanted to get serious about it, I would have got up under the car and just cleaned the whole underbody. It really depends on what kind of show you're at. And in Texas, I remember the competition was so tight that this is when I was showing my Mark III that, yeah, the judges ran mirrors under the car and everything just to make sure that it was all clean. This car, by the way, at the time of the show, has 137,000 miles on it. And so it's only four years old, but given that I drive, 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 I think it looks great. And a lot of people did. A lot of people think it looks great. Not perfect, but certainly driven. That's what the banner in the front of the car says. Let me know what you think about car shows. Those of you who don't value Volkswagens whatsoever, tell me how dumb it is to enter a Volkswagen into a car show. I'm only joking because I've actually had people comment, what's the point, why bother? And I saw a sticker, the car park next to me had a really cool sticker on it and it said something to the effect of, Volkswagen is not a car, it is a lifestyle. And it's very true, it's what's kept me in the lifestyle. I, I think Toyotas, for example, are fantastic cars, highly reliable. And I don't know if there is a Toyota-centric community, but I know within the different models, there are Prius fans, there are Forerunner fans, there are Tacoma fans. And I'm sure all of those subgroups are, are fantastic. And the naysayers against each of those groups would have something nasty to say to them. There's going to be haters everywhere, but as long as we can push that all aside and uh, come together as a community, I think it's fantastic. I enjoyed being at this car show. I don't attend them nearly enough. Bug out 80, that was two or three years ago. So it's been a while since I've entered a car show, but I had a good time at Vag Fair. Did not have a good time driving there. I hate driving around Washington, D.C. and all the traffic to get up there. But I may go back in a year or so. We'll see how this car is doing at that point and I am going to attend Bug Out. I don't remember what the number is going to be, but 
next year in 2022, Bug Out is going to come to a close after a long number of years. I will post that number up here. Bug Out has been going on for a very long time and the, the chief organizer for that is going to retire and I think therefore retire the event. It will be no more. And so I am going to make it a point to go to that one. I want to see what the final Bug Out t-shirt looks like and be a part of the final Bug Out experience. And so if you went to VAG Fair and want to come to a cool show, I think the final Bug Out might be a good one to visit. I will leave you with that to consider. Maybe I'll see you there. I think I will bring the ham radio set up again. Maybe something else. We'll see. Come visit me if you do attend the bug out, the final bug out next, I think it's going to be in May. Until then, I guess I'll talk to you later. Thanks for visiting. See ya.